My name is Thomas Duffy, and today I'm going to guide you through the very common task of overlaying two divs while styling your HTML. The need to overlay two divs is pretty common in web development. You have uh, uh, instances where you have to pop open a modal or overlay some text onto an image like this banner that we're looking at here. Um, regardless of the reason, most people would accomplish this behavior by positioning one of the divs as absolute. This isn't wrong, but a common rule of thumb is that you should use position absolute sparringly. The reason you shouldn't overuse it is because it removes the element from the natural document flow and can get pretty tedious to manage if not used correctly. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to accomplish this task without using position absolute and keeping your document flow intact using the awesome CSS grid layout. Let's get started. What we're gonna be using is this responsive hero or banner. Uh, this is something that may sit at the top of your website. Uh, the requirements are that the header and call to action button sit to the left and the product image floats to the right. The overlaying requirements come in when the banner is displayed at smaller screen sizes. So for a mobile device or tablet, uh, we want the text to slightly overlay the product image. So first, let's take a look at the markup for this banner. So as you can see, we have a parent div with the class name of container, which wraps its two children elements uh, with the class name of left content, which contains the header and CTA button, and the second with a class name of product image, which contains the product image. So I'm going to go ahead and delete all the styling. Uh, I just wanted to use this to show you for the example. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and style this hero banner. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is give the container wrapping all the elements the property of display grid. This is going to allow us to apply all the other necessary styles to its children to accomplish the overlay overlaying effect that we're trying to go for here. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's give the container the property of display grid. And next, we have to define the grid columns and rows. We can do this by using grid template columns and grid template rows. In this example, we'll use a four column layout and just one row. Uh, I'll go ahead and copy and paste this uh, code in here so that you don't have to watch me code. Uh, write out the code slowly. <laughs> um, so here we go. Here we have the grid column, the grid template columns. And what we're looking at here is explicitly defined widths of each of these columns. So we have 100 pixels each column. Uh, and then you have your grid template row of 300 pixels, your height and your background color. So let's take a look at what this actually gets us here. So let's go ahead and inspect this container. So as you can see, we have our grid columns with uh, 100 pixel widths of each column. Um, and then we have our one grid template row. So to kind of make this more clear, we could also do, let's say we wanted to do this one as 300 pixels. So let's look at what that looks like. So as you can see, the second column is 300 pixels wide. Now a cool trick that we're going to use today is the FR property, which is shorthand for basically just saying each column should take up the available space. And we'll do the same thing for grid template row, one FR. And let's take a look at what that gets us. Great. So we see our columns now span across the container and we have our one grid template row. All right, so now let's position our element inside or our elements inside the container. First, we'll target the left content class. Instead of giving this element a width like we normally would, we need to define what rows and columns we want the element to span across. 
So the way that we do this is by using the properties grid column start, grid column end, grid row start, and grid row end. And just for the sake of speed, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in the left content class. So let's break down the CSS here. By setting grid column start 1, or grid column start to 1, and grid column end to 3, we're saying that we want the element to span across column 1 to the beginning of column 3. So basically 50% of the container. Now the grid, uh, the grid row start on 1, you may be asking yourself, well, why would we have to define the grid row start if we only have one row? We still have to define grid row start because the browser will dynamically create new rows and automatically place each new element on that row. So basically defining both elements to grid row start one, it'll force those two elements to be on the same row. So let's look at what this gets us here. Let's go ahead and give this a color of white. All right, so I'll, you can see here the left content is starting on grid column start uh, start one, and then it's spanning to the beginning of column three. So we could kind of play around with this just to get a little more clarity. Say we wanted to have left content start on column two and go to the beginning of column four. So, so as you can see, it just sits there in the middle, starts on column two, goes to the beginning of column four. So let's just switch this back. So now let's add in the product image code. That way we can see the overlaying effect that we're trying to accomplish here. Let's give that a refresh. Great, so you can already actually see this taking place here. Let's take a look at the CSS. So grid column start two and grid column end five. Um, so this is a four column layout. You may be asking, well, why are we saying grid column end five? You always have to define, um, if you want it to span to the end of a column, you have to define the beginning of the next column. So in this case, we want this to span across column four. Um, so you have to actually define grid column end as five. Sweet. So as you can see, we have the overlaying effect that we were talking about. Um, let's just kind of play with this a little bit. So again, let's try this. Actually, this may be even something that's more common. So you have that overlaying effect. without using position absolute. So again, if you're trying to overlay two divs using CSS grid layout, all you have to do is define a parent container using display grid, define the number of columns and rows you want in the grid, and then just force the child elements to live on the same columns and rows, and voila, you have your overlaid divs while keeping your document flow intact.